from Star in the City. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be really exciting. Today I'm going to talk to you about how I've gotten uh, to the point where I can grow really big zucchini squash and yellow squash. This year has been very prolific in regards to my squashes. So I just want to do a little video and just give you some tips. In no way am I saying that these are the only ways you can grow really big zucchini and yellow squash. But these are the things that work for me. So without further ado, let's get started. So one of the first tips that I have for you, and this is something that I think people don't really think about, is germination rate. When you are trying to get your seeds to plant so that you can grow your zucchini and your squash, make sure that you're getting seeds from a company that has a history of good germination rates. And so some of you may not know what I mean when I say germination rates. Germination rates means that more often than not, when you plant your seeds in the soil, the seeds will actually sprout, okay? So sometimes you'll plant seeds and they don't sprout at all. That means it had a bad germination rate, a negative germination rate. So when I always purchase my seeds, I always try to think about what is the germination rate for this company? And not just for you know, the zucchini squash and the yellow squash, but what's their germination rates in general for all of their seeds? So it's important that you think about that. So you might wonder like, well, where are some companies that I get my seeds from that have these good germination rates? Well, I like to think about these three companies in general that have worked well for me, okay? All these companies I actually have purchased seeds from and they actually have been good for me. The first company is Johnny's Selected Seeds. Okay, Johnny Selected Seeds has great seeds. They have a great selection, but they also have great germination rate. I've planted a lot of seeds from them, um, but every time I've, I've purchased my squash seeds and different kind of squash seeds, I've had nothing but excellent germination rates, and I love them. Also, there's a small company called Seed Mail Seed Co. It's a smaller company, but uh, they have a great selection of seeds and when I say an excellent germination rate, I really do mean that. Excellent. Everything that I've purchased from them has germinated including my squash and my zucchini. The last company that I like is in, this isn't a newer company but it's new to me. I just started purchasing the, purchasing from them but True Leaf Market. True Leaf Market has a really good selection of seeds and from what I've experienced, they have a great germination rate. So let's just remember like you can't grow anything if your seeds don't germinate. So the next tip that I have for you is compost. I think some people are kind of like nervous to use compost. Honestly, I know what I was. When I first learned about compost, it was just something that I was kind of scared of because I just didn't really know much about it. But compost is basically an addition that you can add to your soil so that, that, so that you can add more nutrients to your soil, um, make your soil more healthier. And so when I first started using compost, I really didn't know how to make my own compost so I would just ask my neighbors like you know sometimes you just have to talk to people because you don't always have to pay for your compost so I would ask my neighbors and one of my neighbors was kind enough to let me use his compost and his compost is great he only adds the appropriate things to your compost which I'll get into but when I added compost to my soil I immediately noticed a difference in how my plants were growing i mean they grew so much better than the plants that were not planted in soil that had the compost so i can tell you using compost will definitely help you to grow big plants not just big squash and zucchini but just big plants in general in general when it comes to making your own compost which i'm practicing now if you want to do that, there are some things that you can keep in mind when you're attempting to make your own compost, okay? So one thing that I've learned is that it's good to have a balanced ratio when you're making this compost. So one thing that I like to do is make sure that I have at least four parts of brown materials to one part of green materials. And so you might be asking, what is a brown material? And what is a green material so there are a few examples of brown materials that i can think of and that would be mulch like mulch that you use in the garden and you don't need anymore that can be a brown material for your compost you can use leaves uh, you know during the fall all these leaves will fall on the ground use those for your compost okay you can use cardboard make sure that there's no like 
any type of print on the cardboard or any labels on the cardboard make sure the cardboard is clean wood chips are really good toilet paper the actual toilet paper itself and the toilet paper rolls um, is also an example of brown materials so those are just some examples that i can think of but you want to make sure you have a lot of brown materials and then a little bit of green materials and now you might be wondering what are green materials green materials can be a lot of things um from vegetable trimmings like any type of vegetable that you use but you didn't use all of like celery maybe some orange peels banana peels things like that certain kind of vegetable trimmings um the skin of different fruits cucumber they also can be leafy greens so leafy greens like kale spinach coffee greens mustard greens turnip greens any type of leafy green that you don't use all of can be a, an example of a green material that you can use for your compost and of course you can always put grass or weeds um, grass weeds or any type of plant that you don't want anymore that was growing in your garden put that in, your, in the compost bin as a green material but let me warn you right now please make sure that if you do put an actual plant like a tomato plant that you don't want anymore if you put that in your compost make sure that that plant is not diseased because if you have a diseased plant that has you know like leaf blight or something like that if you put that in your compost well now your compost is going to have that disease all over it and that's not going to be healthy right so just keep that in mind whenever you're using plants to put in your compost so another thing that i've been doing to help me grow huge zucchini and squash is adding another healthy addition to my soil that would be peat moss and or coconut choir sometimes i think i said that wrong but i say cocoa choir um i say a mixture of peat moss and or cocoa choir because some people will say that peat moss isn't the best thing to add to your soil not because it's does it, it doesn't actually benefit your soil but because it's not as sustainable i'm not an expert on this but sometimes when we extract peat moss from our earth it's not easy to it's not easy to replace the peat moss that we extract from the earth so, so that we can use it in our garden so some people say it's, it's better to use cocoa choir because cocoa choir is more sustainable and it's not difficult on our earth's environment and in regards to how it is obtained if that makes sense so you can kind of choose on what you want to use but personally for the most part i do use peat moss and peat moss has been very 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 helpful in my garden um in the in how i grow my plants and honestly i've noticed a huge difference when i whenever i add peat moss it's just it's great my soil loves it my plants love it and i can tell the difference from when i plant things in soil where i've added the peat moss and when i plant seeds in soil that doesn't have the peat moss i truly can see a difference and i do make sure that i amend my garden beds every season okay before every season i amend my garden beds and i'm adding that peat moss and i'm adding that compost that is something that i do you know you, you can't just do this one time and then say okay that's it no you you kind of have to do this every season or every other season it's helpful the next thing that i do to benefit me and growing beautiful zucchini and squash is practicing the use of companion plants okay so companion plants i've spoken about this a little bit on my channel before companion plants are basically when you plant certain uh, vegetables or fruits and veggies near each other uh, because they benefit each other um so for example when i'm planting my squash and my zucchini i wanted to plant some things around that area that would attract the good pollinators and also distract the not so good pollinators and so when i say good versus not so good i'm talking about i you know of course i want my bees to pollinate my garden i want the butterflies to help out but i also want to try and get away to like get rid of the, the the not so good ones like the squash beetles um those uh watermelon beetles um aphids just it, too many ants stuff like that those bugs are not the, the best bugs for your plants because if you get too many of them honestly they can um deter your plants and cause them to even die i hate to say that but 
that's true so i wanted to practice using companion plants that would help uh my plants to stay alive that would help my zucchini to stay alive and so there were three specific plants that i used to help me with this process the first one that i used was nasturtium and nasturtium is a beautiful plant it's actually edible and so this is really great when it comes to distracting the not so good plants because a lot of times the bad the not so good um bugs like aphids and um squash beetles and watermelon beetles they will go to the nasturtium plant before they go to your actual squash and zucchini plants so those bad bugs will get so distracted by the nasturtium that they won't really focus on your zucchini and your squash so that's why i planted that another one that i plant is marigold marigolds are very beautiful as well and marigolds are also edible i do believe and it's very similar to nasturtiums in that they do um distract the, the not so good bugs but they also do attract very beneficial bugs like bees and and butterflies so marigolds is really good for that attracting the good bugs that you need they love marigolds and then the last plant that i planted in my uh, squash and zucchini bed as a companion plant was dill now i know this might sound surprising but dill is excellent because sometimes certain bugs do not like the aroma of certain herbs and as we know dill has a beautiful aromatic smell and some bugs will genuinely just not go around that area if they smell that smell and so um when it comes to like squash beetles and other aphids they might be more prone to stay away from your bed if you plant dill or other herbs with a strong smell around your squash and your zucchini plants because they don't like that smell so the other thing that i did to help me out with growing my beautiful big squash and zucchini was to fertilize my beds i think some people forget to fertilize your, your bed sometimes um using a good fertilizer is just honestly very important i can't explain to you enough and i use a specific fertilizer that's a liquid fertilizer it's a fish fertilizer that i just get from my local home depot it's really important to use a really good fertilizer that you trust and i prefer to use liquid fertilizers because all i have to do I mean, all i have to do is put a little bit and this is important only use the amount of fertilizer that is requested on the actual um a bottle that you're using but i just put a little bit into uh, uh my my water the the water sprout and then i water the garden that way and so it's it's just very simple but i do use a good liquid fertilizer and i like to fertilize my garden once every two weeks it's very important that you are consistent with fertilizing your garden because you will notice a difference to how they grow when you don't fertilize your garden versus how your zucchini and squash grows when you do fertilize your garden. You will notice it. And if you haven't used fertilizer, please do. And if you have used fertilizer but you haven't been consistent with it, please be consistent with it, okay? Consistency is kind of a theme here because the next tip I'm gonna give you is about being consistent, but not just with fertilizing, but being consistent with watering your garden so different people grow things in different zones during different times of the year but in my zone zone 7b we grow squash in the summer okay in the heat of the summer and when i say it's hot and humid it is so hot and humid sometimes it's so hot and humid that it's hard to even be outside so if i feel that way imagine how my plants feel so it's important that if you're in an area that doesn't always get enough water during the summer like us um sometimes i have to water my garden every day and i do mean every day heck sometimes twice a day so it's important that you are consistent with your watering um especially if you're in a hot and humid climate if you go like days without watering your garden and you're in this hot and humid climate that is kind of dry at, at some points your plants may die just because of that the last tip is something that I practice. Everyone may not agree with this, but when I am growing my zucchini and my squash, I like to have two of each type of plant. For example, my zucchini squash. I have two zucchini squash and, and I put them all in one bed. Everything is spaced out evenly, but I have two zucchini squash and two yellow squash. I do this for one specific reason, pollination. 
sometimes you will get one plant that only has male flowers and a female flower and one plant that only has female flowers and no male flowers so if i had only planted one zucchini plant and they all had female flowers well i wouldn't get any zucchini because you have to have a female and a male flower so that the bees can properly pollinate so i always plant at least two of each squash variety because sometimes it can be annoying when one plant only has female and one plant only has male one way that you can ensure that you will always have a good pollination on your plant is to have two of each because even though one plant may only have one type of flower and the other plant may have the other one the bees will be able to figure out how to pollinate it because you have more than one of each plant and they're planted close enough together did that make sense so i always try to plant at least two of each because that will ensure that something will get pollinated something will get pollinated okay y'all that was the video i hope you thoroughly enjoyed it if you did leave a comment like the video share it subscribe all that good stuff but before i leave don't forget no matter what you are going through no matter how stressful your day was remember just keep sewing. Bye.